Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I'm Dustin. In this video, I'll be introducing you to another important software tool on the Plus One software platform, the Service Tool. The Plus One Service Tool is a versatile and user-friendly software platform designed by Danfoss for commissioning, debugging, and servicing electronic control systems, especially in the context of mobile machinery and equipment. It offers an intuitive and flexible way for users to monitor and config control systems to ensure their efficient operation. With the service tool, users can download pre-compiled applications to controllers, displays other programmable devices, and monitor the operational status of the equipment in real time. Additionally, the service tool offers a wide range of diagnostic features to help users quickly pinpoint equipment faults. Through this tool, Users can read and modify internal parameters to achieve performance optimization. The service tool supports multiple connection methods, with the most common being communication with devices via a CG150 cable. This connection method is compatible with all Danfoss DPS electronic control products. Additionally, some displays, like the DM430, support USB connections. The CS10 wireless gateway, also support Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. Wireless gateway devices like the CS10 and CS500 support cloud connectivity. Let's open the service tool software. At first, you'll see a start page with a layout similar to the guide start page. You can click the closed button in the top right corner to close this start page. In the lower left corner, you can see that we're currently offline. If you've connected the device to your computer through the previously mentioned methods like CG150 or USB, you can click to switch to online mode. As for me, I connected through the CS10's Wi-Fi function. So, in the gateway selection pop-up window, I select the Wi-Fi gateway found under plus one interlink. After clicking OK button, the service tool will begin scanning the devices on the CAN bus. After this, you should be able to see the scan devices listed under the ECU list. We can click the triangle button to expand the ECU's detailed information. Under the hardware section, you can view details like the device's serial number, production date, bootloader version, and part number. Under the application section, you can find information about the application running on the device, such as the application ID, the guide version, and the compilation time. These details help us understand the hardware and software specifics of the device. If you want to switch to another gateway, you can click Select Gateway in the Gateway Options in the Communication drop-down menu, which will open the Gateway Selection window again. If you're using a CG150 gateway, you can select different baud rates from the Communication drop-down menu. Next, we open an existing service tool project and click the Start Communication button to monitor real-time changes in signal values. We are going to download a pre-compiled program to the device. First, click the Download icon, then locate the previously compiled LHX file from Guide in the pop-up window. Click Next and then Start Download to begin the download process. After that, click Close to exit the download window. On the left side of the service tool interface, you will find two icons, the log pages and the parameter pages. Under these sections, you can create basic and advanced log and parameter pages. You can create a log page to read signal values within the device, and you can create a parameter page to write new values to the parameter signals in the device. Advanced parameter pages are commonly used, because they allow for monitoring signal values using log components and writing new values using parameter components. Let's start by right-clicking on the log pages and creating a basic log page. Rename the page to give it a more descriptive name. Then, double-click to open the editing window, where you can add the signals you want to monitor. You can choose to display signal values in various formats such as bar graphs, oscilloscopes, or text. Once you're done, exit the editing interface and click the Start Communication button to monitor the real-time values of the signals.
Since the components in the Advanced Log page can also be used in the Advanced Parameter page, we can skip the Advanced Log page for now and cover it later in the context of the Advanced Parameter page. Right-click on the Parameter page and create a new Basic Parameter page, giving it a name. Double-click to enter the Editing window, where you can add the parameter signals you want to modify. After exiting the editing interface, you can click the Upload icon to upload the parameter values from the ECU to the Service tool. Modify the required values in the Edit Values column. Then click the Download icon to download the new values to the device. Let's create an Advanced Parameter page. Right-click on the Parameter page, create a new Advanced Parameter page and give it a name. Double-click to enter the editing window where you'll find various available components on the right panel. The text component can be used to place textual information on the page. After dragging this component into the editing area, double-click to open the property window. In the property window, you can enter the text you want to display. You can change the font, style, and size by clicking the font button. You can also click the background button to change the background color of the text. In the hyperlink section at the bottom of the property window, you can add a hyperlink to the text. For example, you can link it to a system scan function, allowing you to click on the text component to trigger a system scan while browsing the page. On the right side of the property window, there is a visibility button. Click it to access the visibility settings where you can add conditions for showing or hiding the component. Let's look at an example. Set the text content to motor over speed, then click Visibility to enter the visibility settings and add a hide condition. Choose the motor speed signal and set it so that when the speed is less than or equal to 1800, the text component is hidden. The image component lets you add images to the page. After opening the property window, click Select Image to choose an image. You can choose from images already added to the project or click Add to upload a new image. Similar to the text component, you can also add hyperlinks and set visibility conditions. The panel component is used to add panels to the page, allowing you to group the components and design the layout. You can use panels to group components based on functionality or organization, helping users understand and navigate the page more easily. The standard log component is very commonly used that allows users to monitor signal values. To configure this component, double-click to open the property window. First, you need to select the ECU you want to monitor then choose the signals you want to track. When selecting signals, you can choose from all the system signals of the device or pick specific checkpoints and parameter signals defined by the developer during program design. In the Filter field, you can select the signal category or you can manually enter a signal name in Signal Name field to quickly find the desired signal. In the Display Data section, you can choose the data to be displayed. By default, you typically choose the signal name, node address, and value. However, depending on your page layout design needs, you can select other data if required. The bar graph component is used to represent signal changes in the form of a bar graph, providing a visual representation that goes beyond what the standard log component offers. For example, you could use it to display the potentiometer voltage signal read from the C2P05 pin. To configure the bar graph component, double-click to open the property window. First, select the appropriate ECU and signal. Then, set the signal range and choose the color for the bar graph. These settings determine how the signal is displayed visually within the bar graph's context.
To use the oscilloscope component, place it on the page and double-click to open the property window. Click the Setup button to add the signals you want to monitor and set the count for each division. After clicking OK button, you can set the oscilloscope to display 11 rows, considering the signal range is from 0 to 5000. Back in the main window, you can adjust the time base for each column on the oscilloscope. You can also click the Copy to Clipboard button to copy the oscilloscope's data to include it in your report or documentation. Line Chart Component This component is used in a similar manner to the oscilloscope. Double-click to open the property window, then click the Setup button to add the signals you want to display. After clicking OK button, you can set the time base to adjust to the rate of change for the signal you are monitoring. The Gauge component allows you to create a gauge dashboard. To configure it, double-click to open the property window, then choose the ECU and signal to be monitored. Click the Select Dial Image and Select Needle Image buttons to add images for the gauge dial and needle, respectively. Position the images as needed and use the Set Rotation Center button to determine the rotation center for the needle. After that, you need to set the minimum and maximum ranges for the signal value being monitored as well as the start and end angles for the needle. You can then preview how the needle moves at different signal values by dragging the slider. This way, you can ensure the gauge behaves as expected for the given signal range and rotation angles. The array list component is used to display array signals. To set it up, Double-click to open the property window, then select the ECU and the array signal you want to display. In the property window, you can choose to show all elements in the array signal or just a subset. If you choose to show a portion of the elements, you can specify the starting index and ending index for the subset. This allows you to display a specific segment of the array signal as needed. Additionally, you can choose the display orientation for the array list, whether to show the elements vertically or horizontally. Depending on your page layout and display requirements, selecting the appropriate orientation can help showcase the array signal content more effectively. The standard parameter component is another commonly used component. It is designed to modify parameter values in the ECU and is frequently used during the debugging phase. To set it up, double-click to open the property window, then select the ECU and the parameter signal you want to modify. You can define the range of values and set a default value for the selected parameter signal. Back in the main window, you can click the Upload icon to upload the parameter values from the ECU to the service tool, or click the download icon to download the modified parameter values to the ECU. This allows you to make changes to the device's parameters and ensure that they are properly reflected in the system. The Boolean parameter component is similar to the standard parameter component, but is specifically designed for Boolean parameters. This component allows you to modify Boolean parameter values in the ECU, typically used for toggling states, enabling slash disabling features, or other binary operations. The string parameter component is designed for string type parameters or signals. This component can be used to write string signals to the ECU as a parameter component, or to read string signal values from the ECU as a log component.
This flexibility allows you to handle text-based signals for various purposes, like labeling, status messages, or other string data in your system. The slider component allows you to modify parameter values in the ECUU using a sliding control. When configuring this component, you need to set the signal's value range and the sliding range for the slider. This lets you adjust values in a way that is visually intuitive and provides control over the parameter's entire range. The Set Pulse component allows you to send a pulse signal via a button in the service tool, triggering a specific action in the ECU application. For example, in a guide program, you could use the Set Pulse component and a parameter component to design logic where, upon receiving a pulse signal, a parameter's value is reset to its default value. This can be useful for implementing reset functionalities or initiating specific events in your application. The graph component is an input tool that allows users to visually adjust parameter values by dragging reference points within a graph, creating a curve. In the graph component, you can set up to 64 reference points. This component is often used with the profile function block and guide. By visually adjusting the reference points in the service tool, you can set a profile curve that alters the relationship between output and input, enabling more flexible and intuitive control over system behavior. The input value component is used to associate a set of hyperlinks with numeric inputs. When users enter different numbers and click a button, it can trigger jumping to another page or a target. These numbers and target links can be customized in the property window, allowing for flexible navigation or control based on user input. The button component is a common UI element used in the service tool to trigger internal links or added script functions through a button click. To set up this component, double-click to open the property window and select a target link for the button, like choosing Parameter Upload. This way, in the main window, you can upload ACU parameters to the service tool simply by clicking the button. This flexibility allows you to configure buttons to perform a variety of actions depending on your application's needs. After we finish developing the service tool project, we can click the Save button to save the project to our specified path. This ensures that all configurations and settings are stored for future use, allowing you to reopen and continue working on the project or share it with others as needed. That's all for this video. Feel free to check out other videos on our channel. For more information on Plus One software, please remember to visit our forum and help desk. And don't forget to subscribe to YouTube channel. Thanks for listening.